Okay, I'm back. All right, so this story really pissed me off, as I'm sure it did anyone that has seen it. So this Michigan mother um, named Shanda, Shanda Vander Ark, she's 44 years old, and she starved her 15-year-old disabled son to death with the help of her other son. So this story pisses me off all around. So if you watch court TV, like I do on occasion, you'll, you would have seen her son talking about what they did to this poor boy. Oh, God, it's, it's, there's so much. It's so horrible. It's such a freaking nightmare. I can't even believe that there's people out there like this. I don't know. I don't understand it. So she has, Shonda has two adult kids. And then she has the son that's around 19 that came to live with her because he never knew her growing up. And his father was an asshole. He said his father was very abusive and he always wanted to know his mother. So he was already in kind of a dysfunctional situation. And the thing is, this woman is very smart. And she'll tell you she's smart over and over and over again. She brags about how smart she is. And they kind of made fun of her in court. Well, you're very smart, right? You went to this college and that college and you got, you know, your IQ is blah, blah, blah. But yeah, she, she'll tell you she's smart and she's very obnoxious about it. All right, so her son goes to come to live with her, as did the 15-year-old. He wasn't 15 at the time. I think he was around, he was around 14. The both of them had gone to live with her around this certain, this certain time period from different fathers, different baby daddies, I think. And she already had, she had a new husband and she had a seven-year-old son. The husband had a heart attack and couldn't work anymore. And for some reason that just triggered her supposedly. I mean, that's where her stress came from because they didn't have any money, but yet they had tons of food and plenty to eat. She bragged about that as well, but yet she wouldn't give any to her 15 year old son. <sighs> so she would punish him constantly. It wasn't just with food. She did put a lock on the refrigerator and the cupboards and all of that, but she claimed that he would sneak into it and try to steal food and eat too much snacks, you know? And so what if he did? So what? It's food. And supposedly she had plenty of it. So who the fuck cares if he wanted some food? Oh my God. Okay. So, so they would punish him and give him like ice baths or She's, I think the, the son said that she put hot sauce on toast and made him eat it. He didn't really have reactions to things that normal kids or normal people do. You know, he could take a lot. And so she would kind of push it to see how much he could take. And at one point she wanted her other son to put hot sauce on his genitalias. And um, that's how sick she is. And she put cameras all over the fucking house, everywhere. She would watch him constantly, and if she wasn't watching him, the other son was. And I shouldn't be calling him the other son, I should know his name. But, yeah, I guess I'll figure out the name of it. I feel bad for him, because I feel like he, did, he, de he definitely helped kill his brother, for sure. I mean, it's no doubt about it. He should know right from wrong. He was old enough to know that that what he was doing was very harmful to his brother. And he thought of it, the way he talked about it was just like, it was nothing. Like he was just, I don't know. It's weird to see someone like that, not really understand what he did. And I think she did a lot of brainwashing with him. Oh yeah, he's 20, but I think he was around 19 when it happened. And his name is Paul. He allegedly participated in the abuse. Uh, Paul Ferguson paces one count of first degree child abuse. So yeah, he was old enough to know right from wrong. And yes, he was in an abusive household before he came there. 
So both of his parents are fucked up. I mean, obviously. So there is that part of me that's like, oh man, he didn't have a, he didn't have a chance. Either did the 15 year old. He didn't have a chance. I think the 15 year old's father said that he couldn't handle him because he was special needs. And, um, so he went and he wasn't supposed to let her have him. I guess in the past there was a custody battle or what have you, and she wasn't supposed to have custody. So obviously this kid needed a nurse or someone to help him. He needed to be in a special place with people who were loving and encouraging and supportive of him. I don't know why they didn't do that. Instead, she locked him in a closet. It was a closet, basically. It wasn't a normal room. It was a fucking closet. And um, she just tortured him all day, every day in different ways. And nobody even thought to go check on him. I guess when his grandparents from the baby, you know, from the dad would try to see him, she would make sure that she got home first so she could have him outside and ready to go because she didn't want them to see what was in the house. Not only was she keeping him in a, you know, in a closet, but the house was really messy. Who cares? So the house was a mess. You know, she made it seem like that's the only reason why she didn't want them coming over. So she tracked them. I think she put a tracker on their car or something, something really fucked up like that. I mean, there's so much here that it's so hard to remember every little detail about what happened. And obviously this is not a crime channel, but this story had me just raged, enraged. I... I hope she rots, rots in prison for the rest of her life, and I hope she's abused the way she abused this poor kid. He seemed like the sweetest kid in the world, you know? He just, big blue eyes, sweet, but difficult, obviously, because he's special needs. He needs more attention, not negative attention. He needs positive attention. He was just a kid. All right, so her adult kids did impact... Um, impact statements and they were like we didn't know and we can't believe she's like this and I mean all, all of this stuff I don't think she was always like this obviously but something happened where she kind of just snapped with this one and she's like we can't let him win when um when he would steal something you know a piece of food so he didn't starve which he ended up doing he was like five, nine and weighed like 66 pounds or something to that effect. It was ridiculous. For some reason, she did not want him to have food. It just is a sickness within her. It was like, I don't want him to eat and I want to control what he eats. And at one point, the son, Paul, told her, um, he sent her, there's a lot of text messages, a lot of them. She, I don't think she thought that she would get caught. She made it seem like he starved himself. And so when the cops showed up, she's like, I don't know why he did this to himself. He was on a starvation diet. Total bullshit. Lied about it all. So the son, Paul, sent her a picture of him and said, look at him. This does not look good. Um, maybe we should feed him. <laughs> and she's like, you know, I get, him, get him some toast, I guess, with some butter or something to that effect. Like, What? Like the fact that you could then when oh this pissed me off too, they showed her the picture of him when he died, in court, and then she acted like she was throwing up. She like leaned over and was like pretending to throw up into, a trash can, and it was all bullshit. I don't believe for a minute that she threw up. How does she think she was there when it happened? How does she not know what he looked like? She was she obviously was enjoying torturing him, and. The fact that she had cameras to watch to make sure he was being tortured properly, I, it's unbelievable. So, yeah, if you want to watch this story, it's on Court TV, and it's one of the saddest stories I've seen in a really long time. She was found guilty, and I think she was sentenced to life in prison. He, he's, he weighed 69 pounds, yeah, 69 pounds when he died. He was his name Tiffany, and um, he died from malnourishment and hypothermia well she had him taking ice baths as punishment her and the other son would put him in the ice in the bath with ice and so 
I, I could imagine that's how he died. Can you imagine? That's the slowest, most painful death to die of starvation. <sighs> yeah, it says putting him in ice baths, depriving him of sleep, and locking the refrigerator and food cabinets. And then she claims, well, I had one cabinet that was open. It was There was cans in there. How is he supposed to get the cans open, bitch? Like, unbelievable. This bitch is unbelievable. I remember when I was around like 15 or 16, my mom had already left and my sister had moved in and she started having a bunch of babies, just one after the other. But this was the first one. I think I was around, around probably 15 or 16. And I was coming and going. I was never there because as everyone knows, my sister is like really difficult, mentally ill, very difficult. It was not easy to live with her. So uh, her first baby wasn't even like a few months old yet, and she was getting food stamps. And my dad never bought food, ever, never. There was never food in that house. That's why I was never there. We lived in this beautiful big house, and it was completely empty of like love and affection and nurturing. It was really fucking depressing. So I didn't want to be there. So my sister, because I took a piece of bread and some like cheese and lunch meat, I made like a tiny little sandwich for myself. She put a lock on the refrigerator. Yeah. And years later, it was discovered. My brother was over there. He was always gone, too. He kind of moved away when I was young. He's 13 years older than me. But he saw the refrigerator with the lock on it. He goes, what the fuck? What's this? She's like, oh, she kept trying to steal food from me. And so I had to put a lock on it. And then he was like, shame on you. You're disgusting. What is wrong with you? And so all the things that I've was telling my older you know, brother and sister they found out were true. You know, they just, they didn't know they weren't there, what I had to deal with. And so I would scrap together a few dollars here and there and just bail again because I didn't want to be anywhere near her or my, you know, my family. The, the situation was very, you know, but the, you don't lock someone out of a refrigerator. You know, it's food. It's a necessity of life. And it's not like her two month old baby was eating that food. She was using the, you know, this food stamps for herself. And so, it's just ridiculous. So I could, there's a little tiny part of me that could relate to the story. Thankfully, I could get the hell out of there. You know, I could walk to a friend's house. And by the time I was 16, of course, I got my driver's license. And yeah, I don't, I didn't want to be there. But I, I can't even imagine being 15 years old, like him, disabled, and having your, your mom and your brother starving you to death. He didn't know what to do, and nobody was really checking in on him. If I was those grandparents, I would have been over there every day saying, let me the fuck in to see how he's living. I don't know who his, his daddy is. I don't know anything about this. They're really not giving you all the information. All right, so yeah, this bitch, <laughs> Shanda Vander Ark, Shanda Vander Ark from Michigan. Yeah, look it up. Craziest thing ever. All right. Ah, uh, peace out.